Healing City Point Church. We're so glad you're here with us today, whether you're in person or online. Just worship with us. When darkness tries to overcome my pain, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken, I won't be shaken. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. no longer has a place to hide. to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand a chance when I stand in your love. This power that can break off every chain. This power that can empty out the grave. This resurrection power that can save. Power in your name, power in your name. This power that can break off every chain. This power that can empty out of grave. This resurrection power that can save. This power in
so, so kind to me. for your presence in this place today. Come on, just right where you're at. Oh, God, we just need you today. Come fill us fresh today, God. 
all the glory.
and show it how to be all in uh, it's who I want to be I give you my love completely Jesus a light of heaven lover Perfect love, you meet us where we are. God, you meet us where you are. And meet you here, church. Oh, Jesus, how we need you. have an appointment today, church, with Almighty God. You have an appointment with His presence. You have an appointment with His peace and His love and His joy and His mercy today. You know, I don't know what you've walked through this week. Maybe you feel empty. Maybe you feel tired. Maybe you feel like, I just, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I, I can't keep doing it. Today, His presence is in this place. His glory is in this place. It's right where you are. So just close your eyes across this place. And you know, we're just gonna, we lift our hands totally in surrender to God. It's not just something that you do or we do or it's some made up thing that people do. It's total surrender to God. We go, God, here are my hands. I'm giving you everything everything and I'm worshiping you with everything God we worship you how we need you God oh we need you oh we need you God, we give you all the glory and all the wonder today. All the glory, all the wonder that you deserve today, God. Come on, sing all the glory. Oh, how you need God.
together this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. And we just thank you that you're here with us today, God. We value your presence in our life. The Father, we make more room for you in our life, Father. I pray that there be less of us and more of you, God. Father, we desperately desire to be with you. The Father, we want your word to be hidden in our heart that we wouldn't sin against you. We want to be led by your spirit, God. We want your fruit uh, coming into our life, God. We want to be a light in a dark world. And so I just thank you this morning as we worship you, that Father, you are fill us and you are fresh us today. In Jesus' precious name. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise this morning. Well, welcome to our Jersey Day. Glad you're here. If you're here with us for the first time, we all don't normally wear jerseys, but you pick the one day of the year that we do. And I'll just say this. You know, some of us are wearing jerseys that require us to be people of faith and walk in the fruits of the Spirit, like long-suffering, uh, uh, patience, and joy. And some of y'all pick the easy teams, like you're three and zero. Congratulations. But some of us are people of faith that we dig deep when we watch our team. So just saying, all right? So uh, anyway, turn around and say hi to somebody next to you, then you can grab your seats. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew, and we're so glad you've joined us for our Sunday worship experience. If you'd like to learn more about us, text the word WELCOME to 972-460-9235. Once you do, you're going to receive a little form from us. Do us a favor and fill that out so our team can connect with you, share more about our church, and answer any other questions that you might have. Now last week, we talked about City Point's long-standing tradition of generosity and how there were going to be several opportunities for you and your families to give to those who need it the most right now. Well, you might have noticed some boxes both in the Life and Hope lobbies that you walked in today, and that's because the very first opportunity is actually a successor to our Boxes of Hope campaign. As you might recall, we partnered with Kroger to help deliver essential products and groceries to individuals and families that were hit hard by the pandemic this year. We talked with Bernie Gessner, who oversaw the first campaign, to get his perspective on Boxes of Hope, but also to hear why it's so important to do it again for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday season. Check it out. So I think the Boxes of Hope campaign was a great opportunity to help serve people within our community who are in need during the time of the pandemic. I think that one of the things that I found really encouraging, but also discouraging at the same time, was the fact that each each time we did it, it, it was a lot of the same people coming back over and over again. So it just reminded me every time how blessed I am, but it was also a tremendous blessing to be able to work with a team of great people helping to assemble the boxes and then seeing the people who pick them up and just how grateful they were for the help, um, how appreciative they were. And it was an opportunity for us to really be the hands and feet of, uh, of Jesus, really serving, serving people not only in our church body, but also people in the community. But I think as we think about the Thanksgiving season and what that means for people and an opportunity for them to come together. And then this year it might be a time when, you know, people have been separated. So what better way to help encourage people who haven't necessarily, they may not have been working and they may not have had the funds to have a, you know, traditional Thanksgiving dinner with family and friends. What a great opportunity to help uh, encourage that, bring people together and then take that pressure off of providing a great meal because that's what we'll be doing through the boxes of hope. Our goal is to bless 30 families this year with Thanksgiving food. So if you'd like to participate, grab one of those boxes, purchase all the items on that shopping list, and bring it back to the church by Sunday, November 15th. And if you can't make it in person right now, don't worry. You guys can still participate by going to citypointchurch.com slash give, click online giving, and select the outreach donation fund. Now, I know that was a lot of information. So if you miss something, you can always head to the info desk or check out citypointchurch.com slash events for all of the details. All right, let's get ready to hear from our very own Brandon Marshall as he continues week two of our series, Dream Again.
We are God's creations, each of us crafted for a purpose. We begin our journey as dreamers in a world filled with possibility. Nothing seems impossible. Along the way, we begin to settle and dreams are replaced with details. Routine takes over. We find ourselves listening to the thoughts of limitations, our purpose and desire lost in the blaring static of our lives. And still, in our deepest places, we feel a push towards something more, a sense that we were made for something greater. We yearn most for a life of significance instead of survival. Let's discover what was lost, restore what was diminished, and live out our purpose. It's time to dream again. Go check it out um, and, and catch up with us. Uh, today, I want to share three quick things with you before Brandon comes and shares a great word with you. Um, number one is our encounter night coming up on the 18th, which is next Sunday at 5 o'clock. Uh, we've invited a guest named Andre Bronkhurst, and he's going to come and share uh, about a specific topic, and that is the gift of prophecy. And then he'll be praying with a, a few people. So I want to encourage you, if you're interested in that, or maybe you grew up in a church that, that, that you're familiar with it, or you're just, man, I've never, I never even know, I don't know much about that gift, then I want you to come and be a part of this Sunday night service. Bring somebody with you. It's going to be a great time. So we'll start at 5, probably end around 6.30. Um, I know Sundays are tough for people to kind of, you go home, you lay down on the sofa, and you're like, man, I don't know if I can get back up. But just do it. It'll be worth it for sure. And then that following Friday, we're going to have our uh, Lions Heart Men's uh, uh, service. And so we're going to have worship and a word. Uh, and then we're going to end that night with a chili cook-off um, with a tailgate party here in the parking lot. And we have a, 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 we're going to have some bull riding and have a competition so you can get hurt the worst. And, um, and we're just going to have a lot of fun. So I encourage you men, not only come, but bring somebody with you. Don't come alone. Uh, it's a fathers and son friendly event, so you can bring the whole, bring your sons with you if you like it's going to be a great day and then uh the very last thing i want to remind you of love is we have water baptism coming up on the 25th uh, on Sunday the 25th. And so if you have not been water baptized, I want to invite you to be a part of that. Uh, it's a celebration of the new life Christ has given you. It's an outward example of inwardly what God has done. And I would love for you to be a part of it, whether you're online or in person. If you're online, obviously you can't do that at home. We can't give you like a cup of water and have you do it yourself. But we'd love for you to be a part of that service that day. It'll be taking place in our second service. So regardless, I'd love for you to be there. I think the men's event is going to be a great event. I'm going to preach a message uh, called Perhaps. And it comes out of a story in Scripture uh, with one of the great men of God was facing really odds that were up against him. And I, it really came out of a, something God's done in my heart this year. This year has been one of my very, probably the most difficult year I've experienced, or at least it's in the top ten, with my heart failure, heart transplant, then leading a church through a pandemic, and then social justice, equality issues, and now the election, which is just all kinds of fun. And so all that going on really caused me to dig deep in some areas spiritually and say, God, what, what do you want to do? And so I encourage, I'm going to share a little bit about that to our men on that Friday night. So be there. Don't miss out. So at this point, I'd love to, I'm going to introduce Brandon. If you don't know who he is, he's a great friend of our church. He's a brother to me. He's a great pastor, great teacher. And so I'm happy to have him and introduce him today. So Brandon, you got it, buddy. <laughs> Morning, how are you? Everybody good today? Yeah, it's Jersey Day, and I'm fully aware that this is a Dak Prescott jersey, and so are all my friends who said, uh, don't drop the ball and making statements like that. Like, <laughs> hope you don't start slow and then give them hope and then let them down at the end. You know what I'm yeah, we all know what's going on. How many of you enjoyed last week, the series Dream Again, Pastor Eddie preached? Oh, amazing message, yeah. Uh, I, I encourage you to go back and listen to that again. In fact, uh, anything that, that happens here on Sundays, there's uh, great impact happening every Sunday, every word that goes forth, great impact. But go back and revisit some of those things. Go to our app, uh, City Point Church app or the citypointchurch.com and re-listen to some things because the Bible is alive. The, the Bible teaches us that it is alive and it's moving. It's always uh, always there for us and every time that we read a different scripture God uh, the same scripture God can bring a different thing to light through that because he reaches us where we are in the moment so just go back and revisit some of those things especially last week and we're going to continue uh, this message called dream again how many of you know that God placed you here for a purpose 
that you're not just here by accident and that the very fact that you still have breath and that you're still alive right now means that God has something that he designed for you to do. That's what the Bible teaches us, that before the beginning of time that he called us to specific things. Uh, you are a winner. I know that it's, it's hard to realize sometimes when, when we go through life and, and things that we try, they don't succeed, things that we, and sometimes we just feel like giving up, but don't give up. You're a winner. You won a race of over a billion contestants just to be here. You were born a winner, and you can do this, and God has specific dreams for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your wonderful word. Thank you, Lord, that it is alive, that it's powerful that it's sharp, that it divides, Lord, the, uh, between the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. God, we thank you for the power of your word and the power of your spirit to deliver it now. In Jesus' name, I'm asking you to bless your people, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Open their ears to hear the word of God. It's our greatest desire to be led by you, to be loved by you, and to fulfill your purpose and your calling on our life in this earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So Acts chapter 2, verse 17 says, In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will, see, will dream dreams. I always thought when I read this, oh my gosh, I just dreamed a dream. That must mean I'm getting old. What's the difference between old and young? Visions and dreams. And so I think, oh Lord, I'm not ready for dreams yet. Keep giving me visions, Jesus. I don't want the dream thing. Yet. That's not exactly what that means, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a fun scripture and it's a scripture that uh, actually came out of the book of Joel. So when we read it in the book of Acts, the situation was this, that it was the day of Pentecost and that God had poured out his spirit. God had done exactly what he promised he would do. And people got filled with the Holy Spirit and the reaction of everybody watching this was something that was, was uh, they didn't quite understand. So they start trying to make sense. Why are all these people speaking different languages? Why are all these people uh, on fire and, and powerful things happening? It was definitely a draw and an attraction to the people around who saw what had happened. And Peter stood out in front and said, no, 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 no. They started saying things like, well, maybe these people are drunk. And they're not drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. That's not at all what happened. And Peter stood out in front of these people and said, this is what has happened. This is what God promised when he spoke in the book of Joel and said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What you're seeing is God actually coming through on something that he had previously promised. This isn't something strange. This isn't something that is just out there and didn't mean to happen. This is what God meant when he said, my spirit will be poured out on all flesh. So Peter is explaining to these people the scene that they are seeing, and that's where we pick it up here. You know, I think that, that a reaction in life sometimes that we give to what God is doing is, uh, can be a little jaded, a little bit thrown off because we, we, he shows up or manifests or comes through in a way that we didn't expect. You know, we have a tendency when we dream dreams to see a vision and see kind of how things are going to work out and we play it out in our mind. And if anything other than that happens or if it starts to go a dire direction, then we assume that we've made a mistake or that it wasn't God because God, after all, has to show up and he has to uh, perform in the way that we thought he would. Otherwise, it causes a different reaction. And that's what you're seeing here. These people knew the scripture. They knew this scripture. They knew. They had read the book of Joel. They know exactly what, 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 uh, what that scripture says. But because it didn't look like they thought, because it manifested itself in a different way, they were confused. Much like the Bible tells us a story of the disciples. And he, the Bible says that Jesus sent them across to the other side. He said, you guys go across to the other side. I'll meet you on the other side. So they get in a boat and they start crossing over. And it says in the middle of the night, they saw Jesus walking on the water. They saw a figure coming toward them on the water. And what was their first reaction? Oh, my God, it's a ghost. And they start freaking out. Well, now they've been around Jesus. They know Jesus. They know the way he does his hair. They know the way he talks. They know his voice. They know all this stuff. But because he showed up in an area or a way or a manner that they weren't used to seeing him, the instant reaction was negativity. The instant reaction is that can't be God. That must be something different. And I think sometimes when we put God in a box, when we, when, we, when we figure out a way that we see it going and it happens another way, our tendency is to have a negative reaction or to feel like we messed up or feel like we missed the boat or any of those things. I, let me encourage you just to open your life up to whatever God wants to do. Because at the end of the day, his plan is far greater than the plan that I could come up with myself. His performance in my life is far greater than I could do on my own. The things that he leads me to and guides me to are better than I feel like I deserve. They're better than I could do without him. So just don't, just, just be open to what God wants to do and say, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to define for you what that looks like. 
when you speak a thing to me or call me to a thing, I'm not going to try to define it. I'm just going to trust you step by step. The thing that stuck out, stuck out to me first in this scripture when I read it is that God says, I will pour out my spirit. This is something that I'm going to do. This isn't something I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking you to perform to receive it. I'm not asking you to do any of those things. This is my promise that I will pour out my spirit. I will take of what is mine and I will give it to you. Everything that we see in life before it was a thing, before it was ours, before God placed a dream in your life, it belonged to him. The dream that you have now was in him before it was in you. In fact, in the beginning, the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And the Spirit that hovered over the face of the waters created this light. It revealed this light. It says that he said, let there be birds and, and, and let there be beasts of the field. And he created all these things by saying, let there be. But it doesn't say that he created grass and herbs or, or the fish in the sea. It says that he spoke to the earth and said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs, everything of its own kind. He spoke to the sea and let the sea bring forth the fish and all these things. Because when God wants to see something, he speaks to what has the potential to produce it based on the fact that he already placed within that thing the ability and the seed to bring it forth. So when God places a dream in our heart, when God asks you to do a thing, it's because he knows he's already placed inside of you the ability to produce it. Isn't that amazing? That when God is speaking to you and saying, let there be a book come out of you. God, I don't know if I can. Yes, you can. How do you know, God? Because I put it in there. Before it was you, it was me. Let there be a new song written. Lord, I don't know if I know a new song. Yes, you can. Yes, you do. Because I put it in you. Before I ask you to produce it, I've already placed it in you. Let there be a new business idea. Let there be a new, uh, a new thought that changes the world. Let there be these things. And God is calling us constantly and speaking to us, calling out of us the things that he's already placed in us. Your life has potential to produce. And the fact that God is asking you to produce it means that he already placed in you everything you need to make it happen. Isn't that a relief today? You are far more talented than you think. You are far more full of the goodness of God and the things, the, the ability to produce than you even know because everything that was ours and is ours and will ever be ours was his first. And he pulled him out of his self. And he put him into you. The Bible says, then he said, let us make man. Us. What do you mean us? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He said, let us create man in our image and out of him out of the person of who he is out of the awesomeness of his creation out of the, 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 the magnitude of his power you came directly out of him you are far more powerful than you know you are far more important on this earth than you know realize how equipped you really are because before God asks you to do anything He's already equipped you to do it. See, we have it backwards. We think that if God is asking us to do something, that eventually we'll be able to do it because he will equip us. No, he has equipped us. The Bible teaches us that he has blessed us already with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. That the moment we became in Christ Jesus, the moment that, that our lives were changed and we decided to receive Christ, that we are a new creation, born of the Spirit, born, equipped, fully designed with everything that we would need to walk out this life as a believer. What an amazing thought. You are a walking, talking, ticking time bomb, waiting to explode with the good things that God has placed in you. Hear his voice and allow him to call those things out of you. He said, I will pour out my Spirit upon you because that's what I do. In fact, Jesus, when he spoke to the disciples in the book of John, he said, it is good for me, it is good for you that I go away. Now think about this statement that he's speaking to his disciples who had spent three and a half years with him, ministering. He was there at the ready. They always had him to lean on. They could lean on his wisdom. They could lean on his healing power. They could lean on any question that they had, he had the answer to. After all, he is the word. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us in the body of Jesus Christ. So Jesus was the walking word of God. No question he couldn't answer. No thing that he didn't say, see coming. They were never surprised or taken off guard, any of those things, because they had him there present with them. How could it be better for you to go away? This I don't understand. He said, because if I go away, then the comforter can come. That won't just dwell with you, but he'll dwell in you, operating and moving and breathing in you. That same spirit, the Bible teaches us, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that same power that created the earth, that same power that has always been, God took and harnessed all that power and made him personal to you, placed him on the inside of you in the person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's not an it. It's not a thing that just jumps all over people sometimes. and That's not how it goes. He's a person. He's the person of the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He is God with us and in us, operating through us. He says, it's good that I go away because then the comforter can come. And then it says, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He'll teach you all things because he won't speak on his own authority, but he will take of what is mine and give it to you. He will speak what he hears me speak. So when the Holy Spirit is speaking things to us, that is a direct connection to God the Father. That, he, that we hear what he is saying. Therefore, we hear what God is saying. God is saying, I will take of what is mine. Jesus said, I will, he will take of what is mine and he will give it to you. Then he says, all things that are God's, all things that are Father's belong to me. And the Holy Spirit will take what is mine and give it to you. So what is our Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is our connection, direct connection with all things that belong to God. That power flowing through you, our greatest asset is the person of the Holy Spirit and our relationship with him and his ability to flow in our life. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon you. Not just any spirit. My spirit. I will do that. I will make it known to you. I will teach you all things. He said, when that happens, everything else in that scripture is a result of that happening first. When he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, then it starts this list of things that will benefit, these things that we will start to experience as a result of him taking from what is his and giving to us. Everybody clear on that? That we cannot afford to believe that we are the source of good things in our life. That our talents, that our abilities, that our hard work are the source of any of these good things in our life. In fact, James says that every good and every perfect gift comes down from above from the father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I love the way it says it. It's very poetic. What it means is he doesn't change his mind. He doesn't go back on it. When he gives you something, he never changes his mind about it. When he places something in you that he wants to see, no matter how bad you've tried to mess it up, no matter how many things that you've done that are, that are contrary to it, God never changes his mind. That is one of the most amazing things that I don't think I will ever get over about God is that he doesn't have a thought about me that I have about myself. That no matter how many times I've strayed away or how many times things have happened in my life that have thrown up roadblocks and kept me from the dream, God never changed his mind about it. That he's still saying the same things about me as he was before I was born. Even after all those mistakes, after all those things, God never changes his mind. We are not the source of our greatness. God is. We live under so much stress because we think that we have to perform. We have to pull out of the awesomeness of who we are and be who, hey, listen, get over yourself. It's not about you. It's about his greatness and operation in your life. And the sooner we realize that his awesomeness comes through us, the better off we're going to be. Let that be a freedom to you today. Take the stress off. You don't have to perform. You have to be led by him and allow him to perform through your life. That is the only way to the fulfillment of the dreams that God placed on the inside of us. He said, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. He says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your sons and your daughters. You know what I love about this is that God doesn't, God doesn't make a distinction between any person. I will pour out my spirit upon what kind of flesh? All flesh. How many people? All people. This is not an elitist group of people who belong to God. This is anybody who will receive it. I will make it available 
God never decided that there were different religions and never, never decided that there were different denominations in the church. In fact, the word denomination means division of a nation. It was men who divided it all up and said, well, I'm going to believe this piece and this is who I'm going to be and therefore we'll be this. Well, I'm going to believe this, but I'm not going to believe that, so we'll be this. And men divided it all up based on what they thought they could control and now here they are. The body of Christ is the body of Christ, regardless of what title they put on it. And it was meant for all people. The Holy Spirit was meant to be available to all people. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and they will prophesy. This Holy Spirit who was a revealer is calling us to reveal like he reveals. That's point number one. He says, you will prophesy. You will reveal like I reveal. Because you are led by my spirit, you will know things and see things that, that I want you to see, that I want to bring to light in your life. Just like in the beginning when he said, let there be light and the Holy Spirit produced light, the Holy Spirit has always been an illuminator, one who sheds light on the will and the purpose of God in our life and sheds light on the steps and brings to knowledge all these things. There are times where I just don't understand. There are times when I don't know what to do next. You ever been in a position where you just legitimately do not know what the next good step is? We know someone who does. The one who's been there from the beginning, the one who sees all things, the one who guides us into all truth and leads us into all good things in our life of the Holy Spirit. And all we have to do is be led by him to be able to see what the next step is and to be able to walk out those steps in our life. And it wouldn't it be awesome if God just created a map and said, here's a map. See you in 30 years. If you get lost, call me. I got family that give you directions, man, you ain't never going to get there. Because they won't say go north and then three and a half miles turn right. They'll say, hey, when you get to the Valero, make a left. Go down. When you see that sheep on the side of the road, he's always there, baby. Do you, you going to make a right? No, 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 no. Be my luck. The sheep ain't there and the Valero's now a shell station. We just don't know. Wouldn't it be awesome if they just, he just laid the map out and said, you're going to, at, at, at nine years old, this is going to happen and this is going to be cool. And then again, at 12 years old, you're going to meet this person. They're going to introduce you to that. And we look at that and go, man, that's incredible. But how boring would that be if we knew the next step? By the way, God didn't design this just so for us to live a successful life and then we'll see in heaven. He designed this so that we would have this relationship that we walk daily dependent on him, realizing that we cannot perform on our own, that we cannot do these things on our own, but we need his operation in our life. It was meant to be relationship, us talking back and forth. More often than not in my life, I have looked back and seen, God, seen the good things that God has done instead of looking forward and seeing the good things that God would do. Now, I don't know how it works for you, but I've accidentally stumbled over some pretty awesome stuff, some pretty neat careers, some pretty great relationships, some pretty awesome moments, and I look at it and go, wow, how did that happen? That was cool. And then it dawns on me, and I look back and go, oh, that was you. <laughs> Man, you're good. Be cool to see forward. But we're walking in that moment with him because he's revealing Step by step, he reveals. That's what he does, and he's called us to be revealers. We will reveal as he reveals. Now, revelation and realization are two very different things. Realization is when you know something, but you really don't know what it means until you come to a realization of how important it was, right? Revelation is him showing you something that you otherwise would not know. No other way you're going to figure it out except for God pulling back the curtains and the Holy Spirit pulling back the curtains in your life and revealing, causing a revelation to happen in your life and then you moving forward from there. It's such a powerful thing. Now this gift of prophecy, which we'll learn more about next week and next Sunday night, listen, be here. Take my word for it. Come. Come. Be curious about the things of God. Let your heart be open to it. Right? Not just the way that we're used to seeing him show up, but let's see. Let's see. Aren't you the least bit curious? Yeah. This thing of prophecy, the first time I ever encountered it, uh, we were in um, McKinney at a church that we had grown up in, and we were young. Sarah and I were just married. I think we'd been married for about a year, a little over a year. And a gentleman came who's still a friend of mine to this day. His name's Daniel. <clears throat> and he's just a wild character, man. He's, just, he's cool, good preacher, all that stuff. And he started saying things to us that I'm like, how, how, could, how could you know that? It's a revelation, right? 
this Holy Spirit is taking from what is God's, downloading it into Daniel, who's now delivering it to me, because God always has a desire to communicate. Whatever avenue, all these things that we see, these, these dreams and these visions and these prophecies, these are all God's desire to communicate good things in our life. He started saying things to us, and then he said something that I'm still not sure I'm happy about. He looks at my wife and says, give him back to God all the days of his life. At this point, we didn't have any children, but right then I realized we were getting ready to. Went home, took a pregnancy chest. Sure enough, we're pregnant with my son, Silas. He's a good kid. I'm just kidding. Of course, I'm happy about that. He's sitting right there. He's handsome. Isn't he? I just remember going, wow, that's crazy. That's, how did, how did, because he's listening, walking by the spirit. He has an understanding that God has called us to reveal like he reveals. Another time we were in a church service in, in uh, the same church and my uh, son was probably six, seven years old, something like that. In fact, I think we were pregnant with uh, my, my daughter who's now nine years old and, and uh, just the most beautiful, wonderful uh, little girl you ever met in your life, but a straight gangster, okay? She is <laughs> sweet and uh, at the same time, just, yeah. So I had, I had a really bad day that day. I was at work, and at the time I was working for uh, a, a boss who I've grown to love and I, I, you know known him for years, a lot of great things. But in that particular moment, we were at odds. Uh, we were at odds because I was a good salesman and, and I made good commissions, but my, my role was based on commissions, and he was dreaming of ways to not pay me those commissions which will get you, if you're a boss in here today and you got a commission salesman, please pay them because the end result is going to be better if, than if you don't, all right? Um, so I was, at, I was at wit's end. We had had it out that day in, in the best way because I would never disrespect him or anything like that, but I certainly let him know how displeased I was uh, by crying in his office because I cry. <laughs> I'm a crier. It's what I do. I cry when the old lady wins the car on Price is Right. I'm like, this is so good. So I came to church that night, and we were having a service there, and it was a Wednesday night, and I'll never forget it. And I came and spoke to my pastor, and he was like, you all right, man? And I was like, no, not really. And I was crying again. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got, a two, I got a, one kid, one on the way. I got a family. I'm, I'm good at what I do, and I'm just, I, I just had it. I, I think I'm going to have to quit. And he goes, hey, well, let's just, just calm down, and we'll talk after service. So we go into the service, and they had a special guest speaker there that night, and I was sitting on the front row next to my friend, my pastor. And uh, this lady named Roxanne, blonde-headed lady, so sweet. Never seen her before in my life. Didn't even know what was going on. I was barely checked in. And as she's preaching, she walked past me and pointed and said, you. She said, well done. You've been faithful. And don't worry about it. God's going to take care of your boss. It's all going to work out. So what did I do? I cried. You know I cried. <laughs> the next day I went in. My boss gave me a $16,000 a year raise on the spot. I didn't know how it was going to work. All I knew was that in a moment where I needed a word, God was faithful to speak to somebody else to me. In a moment where I wasn't listening directly because I was just like, oh, it was just so many things. God was faithful to reveal through the revealers. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and you will reveal like I reveal. Your sons and your daughters will reveal the way I reveal. He says, you will dream dreams. This dream, and Pastor Eddie did such a wonderful job explaining all that that I had to really take a different angle this week because he covered, covered it so thoroughly. I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> the idea of dreaming dreams. You know, the, the, we don't, have you, you've never heard of a dream chasing someone. No, people chase dreams. Dreams don't follow us. We follow dreams. God put the, puts these dreams in our heart and in our life so that we can look forward to something, this hope that we can look forward to, something that pulls us and propels us forward into the future, something that, that propels us beyond uh, and, and causes us to know the things that are for our life and the things that are not. Because the thing about a dream is a dream gives you a destination like a vision gives you a destination. And once you know a destination, you automatically know the roads that won't take you there. Life is not all about adding things to ourselves. We feel like we have to add all this stuff. Let me get education, all that. All those things are wonderful, but it's equal parts of knowing what's not for you. 
being able to pass on those things, being able to remove the things in our life that just don't fit. They don't fit our dream. They don't fit our vision. Counting on the Holy Spirit to do that because when we are following a dream, when we are chasing a dream, we must be led. In fact, Romans says that the, the, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. We are not led by emotions. Lord Jesus, thank you that we are not led by emotions. Any emotional people in here? Don't put your hand up. We already know. <laughs> not led by our emotions. We're not led by every time we get mad or every time Brandon cries. We're not led by those things. We're not led by depression and these different things. And they don't, they don't have that kind of control in our life. Why? Because we are led by the Spirit. The good things in our life come from us following him and being led by him into this dream that he has designed for us. Because after all, before it was your dream, it was his before he put it in you, it was in him. He took it out of himself and put it in you, and you rely on the Spirit for him to lead you toward that thing. What an awesome truth. What an incredible thing that we can have dreams that lead us because the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. I come in contact with people daily, daily. People that say, I don't know what to do. I've got this issue and I don't know how to overcome it. Or, or especially, I mean, Pastor Ed will tell you when you're a pastor, you hear things. I mean, it's just the world struggle. There's a, there's a lot of problems, a lot of people that hurt. A lot of things that happen that will cause us to walk away from the dreams that God has placed in our life. But God hasn't changed his mind. Even though you changed the course, the destination in God's mind is still the same. How do I get over? How do I stop doing the things that are not healthy for my life? How do I stop doing the things that are destructive and that are not leading me to something good? How do I get over that? Here's what the Bible says. That when you're led by the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will not fulfill the things that are not healthy for you. We always think that we have to figure out a way to get over that before we can be led by the Spirit. That's not the truth. Being led by the Spirit is the way that you get over that, according to the Word of God. Tune in to who He is. Tune in to him and listen to him and follow his directions. And those things won't even be an issue. By the way, grace has completely, utterly, and totally overcome the sin issue. It's no longer an issue. Jesus Christ bled and died to fix that problem. Stop focusing so much on that and get your eyes on him. Get your eyes on his vision and his purpose for your life and his direction in your life. And that won't even become a thing. It'll be done. Grace empowers us to live above that. Aren't you grateful for the grace of God? Because I'm going to tell you something, family. If it ain't for real, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Grateful for that grace that causes us to be able to live above those things that bring us down. The Bible says that we should lay aside those weights and the sins that easily beset us. You would think there would be more to it, but the Bible just says, no, just lay it aside. Just lay it aside. Stop counting it so important in your life. Stop counting it so powerful in your life that you can overcome it. Stop counting that issue so powerful that it's something so hard it's not. Be led by the Spirit and you will overcome it. The only way to fulfillment of the dream that God has in your life is to be led by His Spirit who already, by the way, knows all things, guides us into all truth, who teaches us all things. In fact, one verse says that we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. We have no need for man to teach us anything. Ooh. If you're an educator in here, please keep doing what you're doing. That's not what that means. <laughs> we have the ultimate teacher because he has already seen the end of the thing. He's already been there. We're not walking to places in life and our dreams that God has not already been and not already fulfilled and not already overcome and prepared a way. When we walk in the spirit, we walk in a way that God has prepared for us to be successful. He's prepared before us to be healthy and whole, full. Not just us, but the generations after us. Be led by the Spirit. Watch God walk you into the dreams that he has prepared for you. It says they all, you, will, you will prophesy, you will, you, will, you, will, you will reveal like I reveal. And you will hope like I hope. And lastly, it says that you will see visions. That you will see like I see. 
God has used visions many times in the Bible to cause people's, cause people's perspective to rise up to the level of his. These visions that he places in our life. The Bible teaches us about a man named Peter who I've already mentioned here today. But Peter is the character that I, I can relate to the most. I can't really relate to John. John was like the disciple that, that Jesus loved. He was very close to him and all that. And I know that Jesus loves me. But here's the thing about John is he actually wrote he was the disciple that Jesus loved. He calls himself that in the book of John. Nobody else calls him that. He's just like, yeah, there was Peter and there was James. And then there was the disciple that Jesus loved. This guy, young, never did anything wrong. Always stayed true. When all the other disciples ran, <clears throat> ran when Jesus was crucified, there's John standing fearless at the foot of the cross. I don't know that I possess that kind of fearlessness. I can't really relate to him. And James, I mean, James was always steady, right? Steady Eddie. <laughs> he was always steady. Never up or down, never emotional, never just kind of a, always a steady force. I can't relate to that guy. But Peter, <laughs> this guy that you never know what he might say, yeah, him I can relate to. The guy that sometimes got it really, really right and other times got it really, really wrong. And in this particular story, in Acts chapter 10, you can read it, that he is, uh, he's, he's laying around in a place called Joppa. And the Bible says that by the Spirit, God showed him a vision. Because visions are a spiritual thing. Everything that happens in our life is a spiritual thing. You see, naturally, who I am naturally, eh, nothing really special about that. But who I am supernaturally, well, that's the guy you want to know, right? We lean so much on our natural giftings and all these things, and those things are wonderful, and God placed them there for a reason. But who you are supernaturally, that's who God's after. That's who will affect the world. That's who people will go out of their way to come and find and hire and offer new positions to. That's supernatural you, that's the one. So the Spirit gives Peter this vision and it's a, a sheet, a white sheet that's coming down from heaven and it's being held on four corners and it's just full of all kinds of meat, different types of animals and meat. It says that the Spirit spoke to Peter and said, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. Now this brother's a Jew, they don't do that. They don't eat bacon and catfish and all those things. I heard a guy say that he tried to be a Muslim one time until they caught him with a ham sandwich. He said, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I just quit. God said, arise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord. No. What do you mean, not so? This is what I love about Peter. Peter, just say it. Just, just, his relationship with God, God knows. Lord, you know you're going to say something stupid. God says something very powerful. He says, do not call common what I've called uncommon. Do not call dirty what I have called clean. Do not say things that don't line up with what I say. When I have declared a thing to be something, Peter, don't call it anything other than that. And I wonder how many times God has shown us a picture of what he wants life to be. And we go, not so, Lord. You saw when I messed that up, it's already too late for me. You cannot afford to have a thought in your head that he doesn't have about you. And he, what he is saying to you today is don't say about yourself what I haven't said. You see, we see the dirt and the times that we messed it up. We see the things that we don't think are for our life and we go, not so, Lord, that's not so. God is saying, that's not what I said. I have called you healed. You have no right to call yourself anything other than that. I have called you blessed. You have no right to say anything other than, your, other than that about yourself. I have called you healthy and whole and special. You don't have a right to say about yourself what God has not already said. So Peter sees this vision. He says, no, 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 I'm not going to kill and eat. That's not what I do. God says, yes, you are. You've got to start talking like I talk. At the very same time, somewhere across the country, there's a man named Cornelius. The Bible says it was a devout man who prayed to God always and always gave alms. If there's nothing good that they say about your life, say that you prayed and you were generous because that got God's attention. It says that he came to Cornelius in a vision. At the same time he's giving Peter this vision, he's giving Cornelius a vision over here. And in Cornelius' vision, an angel of the Lord says, go to Joppa. 
send men to Joppa and ask for a guy named Peter. And he's going to come and tell you words that are going to save you and your whole house. So he wakes up from the vision and he goes and he gets some men and says, go to Joppa and find a man named Peter. For what? I don't know. Just go get him. He's supposed to say something. So these men make their way over to Peter and by the time he's waking up from his vision, the spirit says, there's some men coming. They're downstairs. Don't ask any questions. Just go with them. What kind of trust do you have in the spirit where he's like, there's three dudes that you never met at your front door. Don't ask them anything. Just do whatever they say. Lord, I'm from Texas. Like we are armed and ready for situations exactly like that. Peter doesn't argue. He goes downstairs. He opens the door and they say, come with us. He says, no problem. And they take him to Cornelius' house. Now he has no idea. Cornelius is a Gentile. The first thing Peter does when he walks in, he goes, I'm not called to the Gentiles. I'm a Jew. I'm called to the Jews. In fact, Jesus ain't called to the Gentiles. Jesus is about the Jewish people. What is this about? Do you even know what they would say about me or how much trouble I could be in just for being here? Cornelius said, I saw a vision from the Lord. And the Lord told me that you had something to say that was going to change the rest of our life. So Peter, realizing that this was God, started preaching, telling them about Jesus of Nazareth who, who gave his life, laid down his life for the sins of many. And the Bible says that as he was still speaking these words, that the Holy Spirit fell on the whole crowd. Everybody there, all these Gentiles and all these people, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit because I will... In the last days, pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Everybody. Peter steps back from this moment. He says, I see now, Lord. I see why you gave me the vision. I see why you called me here. I see that you're no respecter of persons. The visions in our life that God places there are for us to have a different perspective. You will see what I see. You will see things the way that I see them. All of these things are God's way. The Holy Spirit is God's way of communicating to us the good things that are in our life, the intentions that he had for our lives before the beginning of time. The Apostle Paul wrote, and I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling. Did you know that when God called you, there was something he was hoping for? God, what were you hoping for? What were you wanting to see? What did you place in me that you are now calling out? These are all questions that can be answered by one simple thing, to be led by the Spirit of God and allow him to lead and guide our lives. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your undying devotion to us, to all of mankind, and to the people in this room. That, Lord, you have made your spirit personal to us as individuals, individuals who are called by you, individuals who are loved by you. Lord, I thank you for the people in this room. And I thank you for the power of your spirit to dwell on the inside of us, to walk ahead of us, to guide and direct our paths. You are the one who illuminates. You are the one who reveals. Help us to be led by you to operate the way you operate and to think about us and other people the way that you do, to see ourselves and see this world through your eyes, not through the lenses of our own experiences, God, but through the Spirit, the Great One who calls the end from the beginning, who knows all things, who guides us into all truth. We are so grateful for the operation of your Holy Spirit in our life, Lord. I'm praying for these people here and those that are watching us online, wherever they are, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your spirit will be made evident to them, not only in this moment, but in the moments to come. Lord, that we would have a constant awareness of your presence in our life, a constant awareness of what it is that you're trying to lead us to. Lord, help us, guide us, be with us in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now, if you're here, with every head bowed and every eye closed, you say, Man, I, 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 I want to know a God like that, a God who, who did all that for me, a God who thinks about me that much and whose mind is, on, is toward me, but I, I don't know Jesus. I don't have a relationship. Well, today is going to change the rest of the day of your life. My pastor is going to come in just a moment. He's going to pray, pray, pray a prayer with you that will change your life. If you'll repeat after what he says, that you'll be saved. 
That's what the Bible says, that if we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we should be saved. Not any great action, not anything that we could do, not any of those things. The sacrifice has already been made. The debt has already been paid. It's simply by us believing that he is who he says he is and that he's here to save us. Pastor, would you come? That's you today, and you see me, and I, I, I know about who God is, or know who Jesus is, but I don't have a relationship with him. And if I'm going to pray a prayer in just a second, if you say, hey, Eddie, I would like to be included in that prayer. I want to take my next step and either restore my relationship with God or begin that relationship today, whether you're online or in person. If that's you, can you lift your hand real quick so I can see who I'm praying with this morning? Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Others, you say, that's me today. I'm going to rest- I want to just restore my relationship. It's not that I've never had one. I just need to get it back. If that's you, let me see who you are. Thank you. That's awesome. That's great. Well, let's say this prayer with those that raise their hands with us today, even online. Let's say this prayer together. Everybody say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Come on, say it one more time. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask that you'd forgive me of my sins. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I choose to follow you with all of my heart from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's give God praise for those that made that decision today. What an awesome decision that you made. It, it is one of the, it is the most important decision you make in your life, even beyond who you get married to or what career you have. That decision connects you with your heavenly Father. From this day forward, Scripture says your sins are forgiven and you're made new. And I want to encourage you, uh, Andrew will probably mention this too, but I want to encourage you to be water baptized if you have not been water baptized with us on the 25th, uh, a couple Sundays from now in this service. And for those who made that decision today, whether you're in person or online, if you're in person, in the back of all of our chairs are our next step cards. Text the number on that card. Text the word decision. There's instructions there. 972-460-9235. We simply want to celebrate the decision that you made today. Now, the uh, next thing we're going to do, is, and then we'll be dismissed, is receive our tithe and offering. And Scripture, we call it generosity, but Scripture actually says it's worship. It's a person's intention to say, with what God's blessed me with, I'm going to take a portion of that, a percentage of that, and worship God with it. That's what we're going to do. God says, bring me your first and your best. Now, last week we received our Heart for the House offering, and I'm going to give us another week or two just for that to continue to come in. As you know, COVID's changed a lot of things of how we do church. Um, so I want to give some time for those offerings because we haven't reached our goal yet. And all I simply ask you to do is pray about what you could give. That I believe all of us as believers have a seed. Some of, some of it may have one zero on it. Some of it have more, more zeros on it. But regardless, I think God's given everybody in this room something that they could sow into, towards the house of God. And this is over and above what we normally give. If we take what we normally give and give it to our heart for the house, that doesn't help. But if we just say, God, what can I do? So I want to pray over our normal tithe and offering. And then for those who haven't had that opportunity to give for heart for the house, we'll pray over that too. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. And I just thank you for this opportunity to worship you with what you blessed us with, God. That you are so good to us, God. Father, you provide for us so well. And so I just thank you for giving us the wisdom and the strength to work. And Father, from that you provide. And we worship you with what you blessed us with. And I thank you, God, that you're the God who meets all of our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I want to remind you, you can give online, give via text, or also if you want to give in person today on the sides of our sound booth there, our offering um, collection boxes, also in that hall there, they're there. So uh, at this point, I want you guys all stand. Brent Andrew's going to come and share a couple things, and then you'll be dismissed. Have a great week. All right, all right. Let's give it up for Brandon Marshall for giving that amazing word. That was awesome. That was awesome. I hope it encouraged all of you guys. Uh, not to sound like a broken record, but honestly, if you did make a decision today, we are really excited about that, whether you're online or here today. Um, if you're online, you got to text decision to the number that's on the screen. But if you're in person, you can actually check out uh, the next steps table in the life lobby behind you. We'll have somebody there to talk with you guys and share with you uh, your next step. And then like Pastor Eddie has already said, Baptism Sunday is October 25th. So not next Sunday, but the following Sunday. We want to encourage you. You can sign up at the info desk or you go to citypointchurch.com slash events. And you can sign up that way. It will be an uh, awesome opportunity. Uh, and last thing, I want to invite the prayer team up here in the front. Listen, if you're going through something, uh, it, 
Talking to God isn't shouldn't be your last ditch effort, but honestly, anytime you talk to him, something changes. It's powerful. Um, allowing us to allow the Holy Spirit to speak into our lives um, is a powerful opportunity. So if that's you in this room, you said, man, I'm going through something. Um, utilize these individuals right here. The, they want to pray with you guys uh, and to see, we want to hear about the testimonies of what God can do in your lives. So I'm going to dismiss you guys through prayer and then we can get out of here and watch the football. Uh, God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. I ask Holy Spirit that you help all of us uh, realize that you're always with us, that as long as we have lungs, or <laughs> as long as we have lungs, as long as we have breath in our lung, Lord, that we can have a dream in our heart for the future. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit, uh, for this message today. I, I pray that it encourages us, it gives us courage, and it helps us to take more steps towards the dream you've placed in our heart. Help us as uh, a family to be able to love each other and to love on those that are in our community. Um, lead us and guide us. Help us to have uh, just amazing conversations, Lord, that will help people take their next step with you. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Hey, guys, we love y'all. We'll see you next week. Have a great Sunday.